you to talk about the, the, the old Testament, right? You need to talk about those, right? And we're going to talk about that on um, Joshua. He to come around, he to copy Rizzoa and Sheka. Joshua, who did stand it, he, he knew what was going to happen about Sheka and Zora and anybody else who cared about them. But because that's the people's land. They don't care, they don't care to the people. And Joshua knew about Gabriel. Gabriel was going to say about Joshua. And Gabriel knows about it, then he didn't want to talk about it. Now he knew about Joshua, he come around, he he to do, he to do wrong. He, he know things come around. He they think he got thieves. He, he, he didn't want to he got thieves. He think in his mind about the God, and the God told him, be patient, the attitude, on his pose himself, and he don't. Then the, the God said, you have to be patient with yourself, and then he said. You come around and everything you want. This is part of me. But as God said, you got to do it. You're wrong. This is about him and Joshua and Chica. They were all beating about it. They were, they were fighting. You can't do that. You're wrong. But if you do that, then God said, Joshua is a nice person. And we need to take God's word over other things, don't we? Yeah. Okay. What you saying? Like, uh, because you know I've been remedial trying to figure this out for a long time and it's starting to click a little bit, but so if something comes up, if we go to this type of a thing immediately, one, we're already getting close to being just by doing that. Because I'm trying to figure out how to take every thought captive and kind of tie it together. So I'm just so if something comes up if we just stop and think about this. That would be it is it helps to go through this several times, if you, especially before you get to a situation. But what I'm hoping is that you will get to a point where the minute you, you're tempted to do something with your words, God's word is just in your mind. This verse, this verse, this verse, this verse, verse. Okay, this is God's word and I need to go with it. When you're tempted with, with lust, immediately God's word jumps into your mind. This, 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 this. Okay, I need to choose according to his word. So it does help to do this several times, especially before you sit down. So you have script, or before you get to the situation. So you have scripture, like Yeshua did, to combat and to use that truth against Satan. Yeah, this is the this I struggled with this, and I know a lot of people struggle with this. And um, so I want to go through this to show you that if this exercise can be used in any area of your life. So. <clears throat> depression, I'm just going to, uh, you guys tell me if you have things to add to it, but I'm going to add some of my own stuff here. Um, Are you in the physical room? Yes. Even to 
just passed four decisions. Yeah. 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 Because of these things. Well, if it's an element, can it be a chemical imbalance? Can be. Can be. But, but not always. Not always. But it, in, if you look at all of the physical symptoms, it may not, it may not even start with a chemical imbalance, but it can create chemical imbalance. Exactly. Yeah. Depends. Yeah. I would, um, with the past tapes, with me it's like, um, usually when I get depressed it's because of something that I did, um, how I responded to something that, even if it's something somebody else did, I'm usually only depressed because of how I responded to it. Or, because I don't know, I, I, I can make it past something hard as long as I just rely on God and I pray. But it, it always, usually with me, boils down to how I respond to the circumstance. Or even something that I did that was wrong that causes me to go and do it. Satan also gives us a lot of lies that um, causes depression. Okay, so that's the physical. So when the most obvious time I can remember doing this, and I wasn't even conscious of what I was doing, I was sitting in the van. Well, let me back up just a little bit. Um, I struggled with depression from the time I was in mid school. So um, anyway, so we get, I got married, and I ended up pregnant. And those hormones make depression worse. Oh. So I ended up going to a psychiatrist, and he said, you know, a good psychiatrist will tell you this. He'll say, let's try something for three months. If it doesn't work, we'll try for six. But you should be able to get off in six months. So I did choose a good psychiatrist. That's what he said. Um, because it can be a chemical imbalance. So a lot of times if a person has lost a real close loved one and they're going through grief for a short period of time, taking an antidepressant or something can help them through that so that they can grieve normally and move on. Uh, my grandmother was an example of that. She was grieving so bad that she was just in a, a depression that nobody could get through. And I finally convinced her to take something. She ended up taking a supplement just for a short time. And she was able to come out of the depths of that depression enough that she could grieve but move on. And she eventually got off of it. So it can be a chemical imbalance. Now the thing is, in four years, I went through 11 different drugs. Um, everything that worked on other people didn't work on me or it gave me worse side effects or whatever. And I did have one drug that worked for 18 months, but then it quit working. Um, so I began to believe that it was more than just a chemical imbalance. And so the first time I remember doing this without realizing what I was doing, I was in the van. We were house parents at the children's home. And the kids were out playing in the park, and Phil was playing with them. And I was in just such a depression that I couldn't even get out of the van. I just couldn't function. And I just remember sitting there thinking, this is not from you, 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 God, I know this is not from you, this is not from you, this is not from you. So what was I doing? Thank you, Crosby. Oh, I was taking my thoughts captive. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, I'm realizing that what's going on up here is not from God. God does not tell me I'm not good enough. He doesn't tell me I'm stupid. He doesn't tell me that I can't do anything right. He doesn't tell me, see what I'm saying? Okay. So what does God tell us? That we are perfectly made. Very good. Because you have a 
testing all the cares on him because he did. He is with us always. You are leaving? I like to, to say about that first one that we are, we are fearfully welcome mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What else? Can I say if it's not for you, I don't want it? I mean, I mean you know, because I know that yes. something... Yes, yes. Oh, this is not from God, you know. I thought, whatever. Right. And I don't want it. Right. And I accept that I don't receive that. I got into the point, see, that I've been doing this for years and years now. So I got into where the point, something comes in, and that's not from God, leave. And I'll replace it. You know, not just saying leave will make it leave, but I have to replace it. But you take it captive and put it in a little... Yes. Put it in your lock and key and guard. Exactly. <laughs> so what else does God tell us about us? About you individually? There was one when I was attacked in 89 and I kept saying to myself all day, there is nothing that can happen to you that I will not carry you through. I'll be with you. Never gives you any challenge more than you can handle. How about? It'll give you more than you can handle? Yeah. Now it doesn't say he won't give us more than we can handle because technically that's wrong. Mm -hmm. If we really? could do all things without him, mm -hmm. then why would we need him? Right. And he says he won't let us be tempted beyond what we can handle. Okay. Right. Okay. What else? I never leave you never forsake you. Is this, but that's sometimes when I feel forsake that I tend to remember what he says. to the last one we have in physical, he is an advocate before the Father to rebuke Satan's lies. Exactly what you should do. Because what weapons do we have? Our weapons are divine weapons. Better than what other actions could I take, good or bad? Um, you can believe it. Sure. Or you can reject it. Well, what, what, if you're going to take us captive, what about worship? You could praise God to him. That he's gonna, he's gonna. Yeah. Maybe try and look for what is God's purpose in this attack, if you will. Okay. Thank you. 
got to he's got to reach. What else? Seek out support. What else? Okay, you said positive and negative. Mm -hmm. You can do something that alters. You could drink. You can escape, basically. And when we try to escape, when we seek something that will help us escape, we are doing two things. We are becoming addicted, and we are setting up an idol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it becomes the thing that helps you, not... Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is. It's a stronghold. Yeah. It, it is. It's a stronghold. Yeah. What was the third thing you said? Stronghold. Five. Yeah, and, and it doesn't even need to really be something like alcohol or drinking. It can be, it can be going out and so, spending money, yeah. eating. Yeah, all eating. kinds of things. Yeah. It can be anything that you escape. Yeah, it doesn't have to really be a bad thing, like you said. I mean, you could, you could just choose to read all day long and get into whatever mysteries are. I feel bad about myself, so I'm going to. My idol was food. Now, does food seem bad? No, we need food, right? But that's what I went to when I was depressed or anxious or stressed. That was my escape. I'm going to feel better if I eat this can of brownies. Did I feel better? No, I feel Fat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mine is just watching hours and hours of the same. I, I could put one take in and put it on repeat and just sit there for hours and hours and hours. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm working on replacing those reading by blur. Good. Good. Dale? Well, a lot of times when, when I felt depressed or anxious, um, I can't always go to food. I have to go and talk to somebody about it. That's a good one. Talk to somebody. You can pray. Yeah. In my own way, I was praying to God, you know, this is not for me, this is not for you, this is not for you, this is not for you. I wasn't asking anything, but I was talking to him. You were probably asking for confirmation. Well, that would have been nice. <laughs> you can also, like he said, have a therapist or someone you can sure. talk things out. Seek professional. Yeah. Is that something that can become a, an addiction also? Yeah. If you do not move, good professional counseling will not last beyond six months. Just as if you have a chemical imbalance, it should be corrected within six months. Yeah, and you should be seeing signs. A change, like especially in six months, if you're basically still dealing with the same depression. There's something else. You need, there. either you need a new professional or a new <laughs> avenue. Very good. Yeah. If, yeah. If your professional is not helping you move beyond and replace what's causing the depression or anxiety with something better, you need to find a different. And I think one of the ways that you that really helps do that is through the support in the body because the body should be able to see because you can't always see change right but the body should be able to confirm no i think this is really working great for you we notice a difference or exactly. we're not noticing any difference oh no he's really good for me he's really good for me <laughs> we're not seeing it right you know so being able to get some feedback, some sounding board, have sounding boards, especially when you're seeking someone else's counsel, who's maybe not in the body, if you will, you know, who may not have the same And the person going through this needs that feedback, especially if you are seeing improvement in them. Hey, I'm seeing improvement. Oh, good. And I'm yeah. on the right track. I can keep going. Yeah. Or I'm not seeing improvement. Okay, well... Maybe I need to consider something else. Yeah, I think, yeah, without soliciting it, they need feedback. And they need encouragement. When I was going through this, when um, shortly after the kids were born, at the worst part of all this, um, there was a woman in the congregation who just flat out condemned me because I was taking a prescription drug. 
you know, she said, no, you, we're told that we have the mind of Christ and Christ was not depressed. Well, okay. Really? How does that make you feel? You really? Because he didn't say, if this cup may pass me by, that couldn't be a sign of depression. <laughs> I kept going to <laughs> David in the Psalms. It looked <laughs> yeah. like David was depressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least a little while. It's okay. So, you know, we have to be encouraging. We have to speak truth, but be encouraging. And truth is, we're not condemned if we seek something help, some kind of help. If we're seeking escapism, then we're going the wrong way. Okay, so what might the results be on some of these? Let's say, let's say I replace my thoughts with scripture. If you get God's grace, or his, his, his i.e. his power. Grace positive thoughts. <laughs> by, by a van? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Buy a therapist a new car. What <laughs> 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 if I believe the lies? If I choose to believe the lies, it'll probably get worse. Spiral down. Really doesn't know If you're lucky. Yeah. Um. Well, worship and praise is uplifting. Yes, your joy. Your joy. Yeah, replacing depression with joy, mm -hmm. even if it's not directly giving you an answer, I'll I'll wager it definitely can affect that chemical balance. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you're getting serotonins and mm -hmm. stuff like that flowing in your body versus you know other things that pull you down. Right. So when, when well, uh, Feller taught me that truth, and when I was oh, yeah. really That's worked right. on doing that. You know, through some of the issues I have, the next day I felt really uplifted. I woke up the next morning with a new attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it really, does, it really changes your whole outlook. It changes a lot of the negative tape. I, I think I was just going to go. I think that next one actually really goes down with prayer. What would God have me know? Probably goes with prayer. Yeah. yeah. Okay, say I choose to escape. Yeah. Fear. A stronghold addiction and denial. Well, and I can, I will say though, it may, and I'm not advocating this, but I'm saying it may also get you to hit bottom. You know? Because sometimes it, well, it, it, well, it has worked. <laughs> I can see it in my life, yeah. It got me to go boom and go, wait, we can't do this anymore. And so yeah. to seek a different course, you know? But if you get to that point, then you have more than just depression. Yeah. You have whatever addiction. Yeah. Uh, I have my flat job mm -hmm. while I'm trying to escape in, in uh, certain things in his life. You think Joe was trying to escape? No, um, the big fish. Oh, Jonah. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he was definitely. He was trying to escape, escape yeah. responsibilities. Yeah. 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 Running away on the direction. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, seek professional help. What might the results be? Uh, making you be unwanted. Only six months. Do what? You can become addicted to. Their feedback, could you come? Yeah. Or medication or whatever. Well, uh, and I think obviously the, the positives could go in hand, hand in hand with seek support in the body. Right. Okay. So I just wanted to be able to show you all how to go through the exercise of replacing or taking every thought captive. And what I would like for you to do in your own life to help you is to sit down and think of situations you deal with continually. What things in your life keep showing up that you need to deal with? What temptation, what, or, you know, like depression, is that something that you're dealing with? Do you have anger issues? What's going on in your life? 
and list it. Then list the physical. What, what is behind this? What is supporting this? Or what is going against this? Okay, the physical that's there. Then go into the spiritual. Go into God's word. And I want you to have at least 10 verses to combat every lie that Satan gives you. Yeshua had three, but Satan only had three. But he knew it. He fought with the truth. And you can go back and you can say, no, this is true, this is true, this is true, this is true. Then Satan will do what? Flee. He will flee. As long as we don't fight him with truth, he'll stick around. And that's what he was doing in my life. Jim. And then really practice it. Yes. Because then when they, so they can come as fast as they came for Yeshua. He knew immediately the response. He wasn't like, let me go study. The Bible. Right. Yes. It, it was get my strong. boom, boom, boom. And then they don't have a chance to take hold. Right. They don't have a chance to do any damage or cause a You get that immediate chemical reaction that says, uh uh. That's wrong. That's wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, now when I get, a, when Satan tries to plant something, you know, you're, really, you're not a good parent. No. I am human, I've done what God told me, I've instructed my children in the word, he's promised that if I train them up in the way they're supposed to go, they will not turn from it. I can feel that even though I'm human and make mistakes, I am a good parent. Perfect? No. But I can tell Satan, flee. And grow. Well, yeah. Yeah, and a growing parent. And by the time I'm a grandparent, I'll be perfect, right? <laughs> okay, any questions? And go through the whole exercise with all those things, the actions that you could take, the results that might happen, correct? Yes. Okay. And I have worksheets that you can take to work on it. Um, the, thing, the three things at the bottom there, it says what to focus on. Focus on the characteristics of God, the Word of God, and the promises of God. We need to buy you. We need to buy you a small Kinkos franchise. Yes. <laughs> or maybe a big Kinkos franchise. Just pass that on, Irma. Yes. Go ahead. Bring them down there. Oh, sorry. Are there enough there? Yes. Here. Okay. Here's another one for a few seconds. I have more. You guys will need one. Okay, the three things to focus on are the characteristics of God. I'll take one back. Down here it says, um, how do we shape our mind with the Word of God? Focus on three things. The characteristics of God, the Word of God. Are you giving us the answers? The open book I am. Yes. The characteristics, the Word, and the promises. Because there are some things that he promises, there are some things that he just says, and then we can look at the characteristics. Who is God? Why should I believe him over what Satan says? Do you think it's valuable to look at what God has done and, as, and assume that he may do it for you? Okay. Yes. Okay. That's part of the characteristics. Okay. Yes. And one of the characteristics, oh, and what God he has was done. always there for me. You know, so I focused on that. I focused, you are there with me, you are pulling me through this, you promised to be my shepherd, you're going to carry me through this valley. So that was one of the characteristics that I could focus on. Any questions? There were three parents, characteristics of God, you already got promises. promises. And you said, actually, your little blanks so are you've got the characteristics of God and what he has, done. is that what you have done? done. Oh, okay, I got it. What's the blank and blank? Right here. Oh, a mind that is shaped by the word of Yah focuses upon the. Mm, what I put there? 